Uh, we'll hey, Coach. Hey, how We'll get started with Chris. Chris, go ahead. Hey, Chris. Um, just a quick question about expectations in terms of minutes for tonight. What can we expect to see from starters and some of the bench in terms of minutes? Yeah, I think it'll be similar to last game. Uh, maybe push it out another, you know, another 10, 15, 20%. No more than that. Um, definitely below 30 uh, when when guys are struggling like like Ant or Cat or, or Dilo, maybe struggling early to get going for their shots, do you kind of have certain sets that you want to call for them to maybe try and get them going that that are specifically for them? Yeah, for sure. Um, we don't have a ton of sets in our playbook right now. We've been we put in a, a bunch yesterday actually, but up until now we've been kind of focusing mostly on our transition, our flow game, um, our early actions, and that kind of stuff. So. Jace, go ahead. Hey, Chris. Ant's been doing other things, certainly, but would you like him more involved than he's been offensively? For sure. You know, we talked about it yesterday. We'd like to be him, have him get a little bit more um, opportunities in transition. That involves getting out and running ahead of the ball, uh, being more aggressive, getting to the rim, getting downhill. Uh, you know, it's also, again, and we talked about this several times, like the minutes uh, distribution right now and the way the puzzle is that it doesn't allow us to get him extended minutes with some of those blended lineups that where he can be, where he's really aggressive, you know? So hopefully we're going to try to get some of that tonight. What, what are the most important things you think you can actually learn from these preseason games? Uh, yeah, it's just building your foundation. Really. Are you doing the things that you've been talking about doing, uh, continue to get in shape you know, our guys, you know, we've seen, we play with, play with good intensity and good spirit. Um, I think we're getting the basics right right now. Um, you know, now we've added a little bit more depth to our game planning to see if we can execute some of that stuff now. So it's more where the team is at maybe versus where like individuals are at? I think it's a combination of both, but we're a little bit more concerned about team level right now. I think individually we're, um, we're pretty happy where people are from a fitness level. Uh, you know, guys are in different, different uh, rhythms. You know, some guys are not probably where they want to be just to start the season, but we, we have another week. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Dane, go ahead. Chris, you started uh, Josh the first game, Jared Vanderbilt the second game. What are the differences in those two players when they're with that group of what you want them to do offensively? Yeah, um, you know, Josh is probably like a little bit more of an attacker off the dribble. Vando's a bit more of a, you know, gives us a, 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 like a role dynamic. Um, a little bit more active on the offensive glass, of course. JO's improved shooting helps. Um, you know, defensively, they both are high level and take the challenge of guarding different guys. Uh, both of them get out in transition. So, we, you know, tonight we'll probably mix it up again. Lucas, go ahead. Uh, forgive me if this has been uh, at all, but. Uh, with uh, both Josh and Jordan, their injuries, are they just kind of typical things you see, expect from people as they kind of get into their flow? Or are they something more of concern going forward? No, they're just, you know, kind of typical training camp kind of bumps and bruises and just being super cautious. Are we uh, expecting to see them play it all tonight? Or uh, J-Mac is out. And J.O. will be game time decision after he warms up. We'll see how he feels. Thank you. Yep. Any last questions on the Zoom before we move to the in-person questions? Britt. Britt, go ahead. <laughs> hey, Chris, if you get uh, 12 guys who are playing really well, um, will you stagger 9 or 10, or will you just basically have to tell two or three guys to wait while your rotation holds so you get some continuity? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, you know, we're probably going to end up staggering our lineups just so we can kind of cover the, the, you know, cover the, the minutes that we need for our top guys. But everything's on the table right now still, Britt. Thanks for having my back there, Coach. We'll go last question to Brendan. Brendan, go ahead. Okay. Hey, Coach, with J-Mac being out tonight, do you think you'll see Leandro Balmero come in and play any of those point guard minutes that J-Mac was taking up in the previous yes, two definitely. games? Yeah, definitely. We're definitely going to get him to that, which is, which is great because we were 
wanting to do that anyway. Bree, go ahead. Good. Yeah, uh, Patrick's been uh, an incredible addition for us. You know, his professionalism, his approach, his you know competitiveness, his attention to detail, his willingness to hold his teammates accountable, uh, just kind of that business-like approach. Having been you know to the playoffs, knowing what it takes. Um, you know, it's been a joy to work with so far, really has been. And, and I was fortunate enough to be in Houston when he came there. So I have a bit of a relationship with him. And uh, he was exactly what our team needed, not only in terms of being a, you know, high-level defender, but just in terms of being a high-level professional for a team that's young and, you know, trying to to learn as quickly as they can. What, what are some of the players Yeah, uh, a little bit of a tough question for me to answer in that, like, because my season was crazy last year. I think I only played the Clippers once, um, and I don't think Patrick played in that game. So I didn't really see a whole lot of him. Um, but, you know, we put, we put a ball in his hands and let him push and let him create and let him kind of just, you know, we haven't really – you know, kind of put him in any box or something like that. So he's, he's been great. Really has been. I don't, I don't really know how I can compare him again. So, um, but yeah, he's got, he understands his role right away. He understands his, his job is to stand behind, you know, Cat and Elo and make sure that those guys are bringing it every single night. Yeah. 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 There's no wasted words. It's pretty. It's very direct. You know, he's right to the point. Um, you know, he'll tell you. He'll tell you why. You know, he'll tell. He'll tell his teammates why. And then, the best thing about it is he goes out and does it himself. You know, um, the unique thing about Pat is, you know, having been. Uh, with him when he came into the league, he had that chip on his shoulder. That's kind of been, you know, everything that he, he, he is about and he still has it, you know, as a vet who's, you know, had quite a bit of success in the league for somebody who went undrafted, went to Europe and all the, all the things that, you know, he had to go through to make it here in this league. So with that chip on his shoulder, people understand that he's like a self-made NBA guy and that, that, that alone carries a lot of weight. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, I think last year's group was pretty quiet. You know, this year we have um, adding Pat is, He's also a catalyst for conversation. He's not just like the only voice in the room. He's getting others to talk and talk in a meaningful way. Um, and that's just, you know, com like communication is also like about confidence. You know, you know that you're saying the right things that you're also trying to do. Um, you know, when you don't have that as a coach, like just generally you have to fill that void yourself um, and just hope they don't stop listening. <laughs> but uh, I was noticing video of you guys in preseason, you guys have been coming to the screen, the level of the screen a lot more defensively. Mm -hmm. Is that kind of how you see the league has to be played now? You can't play drop as much on the way that it's gone? I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think it's an overall trend to do that. I mean, it's, you know, I think it, you're, you're choosing one or the other right now. Um, you know, I think what we've learned in the league is it's really, really hard to protect both the rim and the three point line. So you got to make a, you got to make a choice and, um, you know, when you don't have an elite rim protecting defensive big, you know, there's, there's ways you got, you can't just have guys coming downhill all day long. I mean, Cat has got a good feel for drop coverage, but, you know, it's just with what we ask him to do defensively, it's not kind of fair to have a runway to the rim. He's got to do that all night too. So. Yeah. Uh, Patrick, you know, you've been 
you feel like you've adapted pretty well to yeah the screen every time? yeah 100 yeah. percent Yeah. Yeah. I mean, two of the most skilled players I've ever worked with. I mean, they can score at all ranges. They can both pass and handle, and dribble, create for themselves in tough spots, and create for their teammates for easy shots. Um, they're unselfish. They have a pretty good chemistry, given the fact that they really haven't played that much and they have a great feel for reading each other. They're always communicating. Um, yeah. So we're, we're super excited about it. Um, and, you know, we just got to keep learning each other, really. We're still kind of in the learning phase with it. So. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, guys. Yep. Thanks, Appreciate it.